Amen. I want you to turn with me, if you've got your Bibles today, to two spots in God's Word. Uh, I guess we'll work backwards. I'd like for you to turn with me, please, first to Jeremiah chapter number 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, and find your spot in verse number 7, and then the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 16. So Jeremiah 17 and Proverbs chapter number 16 this morning. Jeremiah chapter number 17, verse number 7. We're going to read uh, verses 7 through 10. And then Proverbs chapter 16, we'll start in verse 16 and read a few verses there. If you found your spot and you're able and willing this morning, I'd like to ask you to stand with me, please. Just in the reverence of the reading of the Word of God. So first, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse number 7. Our Bible says this. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Now in Proverbs chapter number 16, verse number 16. It says, How much better is it to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? The highway of the upright is depart from evil, and keepeth his way, preserveth his soul. Pride go before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly, than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handleth the matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusts the Lord, happy is he. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. But instruction of fools is foley. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. Pleasant, pleasant words are as in honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. I'd like to ask Brother Mike Holcomb, will you dismiss our prayer, please? Man, thank you. May be seated this morning. So this morning, I want to share with you a message. We and you pray for me, and I'll try not to tear you along um, with this voice. So, um, what is in your heart? It's the title of the message today. What is in your heart? Not who is in your heart. But what is in your heart? Now, I am concerned today about who is in your heart. There's only one person that can live in your heart, and that's Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost, God tells us in John 14 that He's going to go away, or that He did go away, told the disciples that He can send a comforter to us, and that's the Holy Spirit. So you can't accept the devil. That, that there's, no, there's no way of that. The only, that either He is Jesus Christ in your heart, or they're not, okay? You either serve this fleshly man, but when you serve the fleshly man, no man lives in your heart other than Christ, okay? You understand that? There's only a place in your heart, but you can give a place to this world. 
You can give, give in to this body or this robe of flesh. That's why the, God told or Jesus told the disciples, uh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, So whichever one you serve uh, is one, the one that's going to be greater than the other. Old man, there was fighting dogs and uh, they was betting on the dogs. And he betted one. He said, how, how do you always win? He goes, well, I know who, which one gets fed. He said, I bet on the one that gets fed, and that's how I'll win. And that's pretty, I mean, it's pretty simple today. Whichever one you feed, that's what's going to happen. And whichever one of us that eats the most, feeds the most on Jesus Christ, I ain't saying we'll live the longest, but we'll have the, the most blessed life. Okay? So how in the world does that happen? Because if you have the peace of God, you can, you can withstand anything. You might, I'm not saying you won't, that you won't have troubles and trials, but when they come, as long as you have the peace of God, you'll make it through every one of them. And you'll make it better, uh, you'll fare better than most anybody will at that moment and at that time. When God sent Elisha over to the brook of uh, Cherith, he told him to sit there. And everything was fine, but, uh, but I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, it's probably a dreary way to be uh, because the, the brook was going down, the drought was coming in, things was a dying, and the only choice he had to do was to sit right there and watch it all till God said move. But he had the peace in his heart that that's what God told him to do and that's why he could do it. That's why he could do it and be, uh, and be successful because the very next step that he took for God was over to Zarephath. He found the lady picking up sticks and when he met her, God spoke and, and then he spoke to her and he said please make the morsel for me first and when you make it for me first it'll be for God Almighty because I'm supposed to be his man. And when she did she went back she said I don't have enough but just for me and my son and if I make for you I won't have none it'll be all gone he said make for me first she minded God minded the man of God and when she went back to the barrel of meal it was full it never went dry and that's the way it is with God he'll give you the peace you just have to learn uh, to mind him same way as our Sunday school lesson uh, this morning uh, the man was supposed to go and fight the battle for God Almighty and he went to the uh, uh, to Deborah the prophetess and she said I'll, he told her I'll go if you'll go and because she went he went and she prophesied and told him we'll go together but it won't be on your honor you won't get no credit for it you'll just go because you went but but the blessings will go to somebody else today. So it's up to us. I'm asking you again. What is in your heart? What is in your heart? So I'm going to ask you this question. You don't have to answer out loud. You can't. It's fine. The New Testament, who we are, we're the New Testament church. What are the commandments for the New Testament church? You should say the 10 in the Old Testament, but there are two drawn out extra for us in the New Testament. The first, the love of the Lord God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy might. Then love your neighbor as yourself. The Bible, Jesus Christ, written in red in your Bible, if you have a red letter edition, says that Christ told them, and on these two hang the rest of the 10. So that's why I think it's important this morning when I ask you, what's in your heart? You know why that matters? Because when you try to love somebody, that's how you love them, based on what's in your heart. Because that's what you love with. That's the very essence of where it comes. And so today I ask you, what's in your heart? Now today I hope and pray that you've given a place to Jesus Christ, that you have accepted Him as your personal Savior. You've called upon His name and admitted that you were lost, that you have sin, and that you, uh, that you thank Him for dying on the cross for your sin, and you ask Him to come in and save you. And you, and you agree, and y'all make a commitment together, and that he, he reached down, and you reached up, and everything's settled. But after the fact today, I wonder, and I'm asking you again, what is in your heart? We do after the fact. There's a few things I want to share with you today. And I've shared a few here. It talks about um, the heart it is deceitful above all things in the book of Jeremiah. Deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So now preacher, we're talking about loving with all of our heart. And Christ and God told us to love the Lord God with all of our heart. And love your neighbor as yourself. And But the Bible says in the Old Testament, and you said it ain't to be thrown out. How in the world can we love with something that says it's desperately wicked and deceitful above all things? Who can know it? How do you do that? You've got to clean that thing up. 
And you can't just clean it up. It's kind of like having a vehicle or having a house or having anything for that matter. You don't get to clean it just one day. And when you go out there and you sit down to eat supper at your house, you can't just wash them dishes one time and call it quits. It's just, let's say we have Sunday dinner today and it's all set out there nice, neat, and beautiful. I'm not talking about the paper made either. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the real ones that you have to wash. Now tomorrow, it comes time to eat again. You say, now, you might be one of them and say, well, we won't be there. We're going to have Bible school. We're going to eat at the church. I understand. Next Sunday, will you wash them dishes again for next Sunday? I hope you will. I hope you will. They got to remain clean. If they're going to be clean, you're going to have to wash them again. So every day, just as she said, we ought to look for Jesus Christ to clean us, to wash us, to use us. Now, can we remember ever seeing a little thing? No, you cannot. I heard one preacher and he said it best. We ought to be like a sift. Or what's the other fancy word for it that you ladies use? A cauldron. That's what they are. That they use them in the, uh, in the kitchen. Okay? So they got holes in them. That's when you bake them noodles and pour the noodles in because the water goes out the bottom. Said every day you ought to read you a, a chapter in the Bible. That's what he said. The man asked him, he said, well, how in the world do you remember everything you read? He said, well, it's kind of like washing a cauldron. You just keep pouring it in. It's going to keep going out. But eventually it'll get clean. You'll keep something within there. You ain't meant to keep everything. God will, if you put it in, God will take it out. You with me? But you've got to put it in. You've got to put it in. So five, six things today I want to share with you about what's in your heart. Now this is going to be a little different type of message. These are some thoughts that I feel like we ought to ask ourselves. Number one this morning. This is more of a statement than a question. And I want you to consider it today. And I'm asking you what is in your heart. I want you to ask yourself that. To be right with God. I, I've got to say this. It's on my heart. I, when you make your decisions about is this really what God wants me to do or not? Is this going to be okay? Thank God I'll overlook this or not. Does everybody know about baptism? Raise your hand. I'm not trying to be foolish this morning. Does everybody know about baptism? Does everybody, I believe everybody should agree with me here, that baptism does not save your soul. Right? Remember me telling you some time before that for you to be happy and right with God, there's going, you're going to have to need to do some things that maybe the world don't count to be important. But if you want to be in the best place you can be with God, you must do them. They may not pertain to nobody else. I'm talking about convictions. Like, my, like every one of you ain't, most of you men ain't coming here with a tie on. You ain't wrong for that. But this is how I'm convicted. It's this is why I wear it. I just think it looks appropriate. That's the way it ought to be. Do you understand? Now, they, some preachers don't have this on. And if whoever's on the list, it don't make a difference to me. I try to please everybody. This is how I feel you ought to look. If you're going to preach God's word, this is the way I feel. Now, if you can have a different opinion, and we can both be right about that. It's called a conviction. But do you know how, how far, this is what I want to get to. Do you know how far Jesus Christ walked to get baptized? Now, that salvation, he didn't need to be baptized. Let's go ahead and get that straight. It's Jesus Christ. It's God's son. You with me today? And if you're not baptized, never been baptized, that's fine. You're still going to go to heaven. The thief on the cross what was, asked Jesus, come to his heart, he said, Lord, remember me when thou enterest in thy kingdom. And Christ, what did he say? Thou shalt be with me in paradise. That was then. He didn't get baptized. But Christ made a request. You with me? You with me? And Christ wanted to be right with his heavenly father. He knows him. Okay? You know how far he walked? 60 miles. Christ went to go see John the Baptist. And from this town to the next town is 60 miles. You know how far that is? Put in North Wilkesboro to Winston. Thereabouts. Now there's a sign down there. It's a little further than that. North Wilkesboro and Winston is a little further than that. But you see the sign that says 55 miles. When you're leaving North Wilkesboro heading to Winston, 55 more miles get to Winston. Good night. What was the purpose? Because he's concerned about it. It's on his heart. He wanted to do it. It was on his mind, on his heart. What? No, nobody else's heart. What happened when he got there? Told John the Baptist, I'll get baptized. And John perceived that he was the Son of God, the Messiah. John said, I think you need to be one baptizing me. He said, No, you're going to baptize me. 
You want, now they was cousins. Never mind John knew he was. Remember they was cousins? And he leaped in his mother's womb when Mary told Elizabeth that he was married. He knew him. So the next time you decide, ah, thank God I'll overlook it. I don't know. It's for you to decide. But Christ walked 60 miles just to get baptized by one man. He felt was the closest to the Lord that should baptize him. Why? Because God told him to. What's in your heart today? How far will you go for you to be right with God when he speaks to your heart? That is what I'm saying. God touched his heart, spoke to him, said, Jesus, I want you to get baptized. All right, who do you want me to baptize? Who, who you want to baptize me? John. Where's John at? John's down here. That's 60 miles. Yes, sir. 60 miles. Get to walking. He went to walking. Why? Because he wanted God to be happy with him. And I ask you again today, what is in your heart? As far as I know, I've been saved since I was five years old. Now I'm 36, 31 years. God ain't asked me to walk 60 miles yet. He ain't. I don't think he is you either. But I'm just asking you, what is in your heart? Number one today, I want to share this thought with you. I want you to ask yourself. You can be as straight as a gun barrel, logically, in this thinking. You can be straight and you can be right. We can all be right as a gun barrel. The point of this statement is the gun barrel. You can be straight as a gun barrel. If the gun barrel's crooked or the rifles is off, it don't shoot straight. Everybody agree with that? But guess what? If you don't load the thing, it ain't good for nothing. You can be as empty spiritually as a gun barrel as well. You can be as straight as a gun barrel, but if you ain't filled with the right things, and you ain't got the right things, and you say, why does that even matter? Because God's got different things. There's all kind of different kind of guns today. Different kind of calibers. Big ones, small ones, short ones, long ones, fat ones, grenades, cannons. Uh, we can keep going today. And you can't put a big bullet and a small gun don't work that way. But God has got the right barrel for you. You with me today? And He knows you. He tells us that. He says He knows the very hairs that's on your head. He knows the very true intention of each of our hearts. Specifically today. I mean, I hope, to, I hope and think that I was the only one come prepared to preach today. I mean, I didn't line nobody else up. And I don't know if you come prepared but I'm, just, I'm not trying to be funny, but I'm just being serious. We know what God has us to do. We just need to do it today. We know what's in our heart. We suspect. We just need to ask Him. Let me ask, let me, let me, uh, uh, have you ever thought about, here's another one. I've been thinking of these. We've been having these often on Wednesday nights. And lately it's been about Lazarus. I thought another thing about Lazarus that I asked you if you got the answer to tell me. Why did Jesus ask them, uh, Mary and Martha and the rest of everybody else, well, where's he at? <laughs> you look it up. Jesus knows everything. He's God's son. Why do you think he asked them, well, where'd you lay him at? Where'd you bury him at? He knows where he was laid at. You know why? He wanted them to tell him. He wants you to come to him. Just that he knew, where'd you lay him at? You give everybody an opportunity to make decisions and a choice to tell him. Or he was wanting to know, are you really just going to bicker or do you really expect me to do something? Where'd you lay him at? Well, bless God, they took him, uh, they took him to the tomb. And when he took him, they done what nobody else would expect. And today, if you'll take him to the place, to the predicament, to the situation, and ask and expect and believe, he'll make the difference in a manner you never could believe before. Because Christ, God, just asked you like he asked Jesus. I want you to get baptized. All right, where'd you want me to get baptized at? I want you to go see John. And when John baptized him, things happened like nobody could ever. The dove lit on his shoulder, you remember? And God spoke and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. All because two men done what God asked them to do. They seen great and mighty things. He'll do the same thing for you. He said he's no respecter of persons today. He'll do the same for you as he did the rest of them. It's up to you today. What's in your heart? So understand, you can be as straight as the gun barrel logically, but you can be as empty too. Matters what's in your heart. And what was good for yesterday ain't good for today. You got to have something new. You with me? Let's move on. I got to hurry. Number two today, we cannot pray in love and live in hate and still be right with God. 
You cannot pray in love, live in hate, and still be right with God. When you see so-and-so, you ask yourself, don't say it out loud. You ask yourself, there's somebody you know, I don't know about them. When you see them, it takes you to a predicament situation. I can't live without you. You better make it right. And if, you, if you've tried and, you, and it won't, then fine. You're on the good end. But you can't pray in love and live in hate and be right with God. Don't work. That's what, that's what this says. The Bible says, if they have all against you, go to them. That's what it says. I didn't say that. God gives a curriculum if you've got a situation or a problem. If Dwayne's got all against me, my job, i got to go to Dwayne. Try to make it right. And if Dwayne won't forgive me, i got to find somebody I can take with me. And we go to him in the Lord and ask him for forgiveness. That's what it says. It didn't say if you feel good about it or if you feel like you've done something wrong. It said Dwayne's got all against being Romans. Being Romans, go to him. And that's how you settle it. Serious, what the Bible says. So let's move on. You cannot pray in love and live in hate and still be right with God. Number three, David, I'm asking you, and I'm being serious. What is in your heart? What's in your heart? When the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself, love the Lord God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, that's what matters, what's what's in here. If somebody said, for me to give blood, green a hug, but I got mud all over me, guess what's going to be on him? Mud. I mean, that's just the way it is. I hope that's simple enough for you. It makes sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you. Number three this morning, what's in your heart? Now listen closely. A Pharisee, and everybody's got their own ideas and definitions of Pharisees, and this is just a simple man. That's all I am. Just a simple man's definition. A Pharisee is hard on others and easy on himself. A Pharisee is hard on others and easy on himself. A spiritual man is easy on others and hard on himself. You know why? Because he's concerned. Am I right with the Lord? He'll know when he stands before God, he knows. It don't matter what someone says. It don't matter about Aaron. I'm going to be his friend. I'm going to love him no matter if he shaves his head or does whatever. It don't make no difference to me. But what matters is that I'm right with God. And I got to pray and help Aaron. I got to be concerned for him. And Seth and Miss Judy and Miss, uh, Miss Susan. I got to be concerned for us all. A Pharisee is hard on others and easy on himself. A spiritual man is hard on himself and easy on the rest. Because what matters is what you, what's right, what's right with me. Because you can't help what's right with them. I can't do a thing for you today. I can love you, help you. I, when I come to the pulpit, I'm just a pitcher. I pitch you the ball. It's up to you to hit, catch, throw, stay on base, run home. I don't know. If you're one that stands in the choir in, in, in the crowd and cheers, as long as you got a spot, it's up to you today. I can't, I can't, I, I mean, it don't make a difference. Everybody on this planet that's ever lived does what? What they want to do. What they want to do. Jesus Christ, God Almighty, will not change your mind. He will influence and convict your heart. But He gives you the free mind and heart. Make your own decisions. That's Him today. A Pharisee, hard on others and easy on himself. A spiritual man, he's hard on himself and easy on others. He's never satisfied. Do you understand the children of Israel, they always went up to the mountain and fell back down real fast. They're right with God, wrong with God. Right with God, wrong with God. You know how do you stay right with God? Never be satisfied. Never reach the mountaintop. And if you feel like you're up there, don't be satisfied with where you're at. Decide that, Lord, I want a better relationship. Lord, what's good today won't be good tomorrow. Lord, I want to keep, as long as you keep digging and you keep praying and you keep deciding that He's what you want, He'll be all you need. But the moment you decide, I have arrived, I am done, I have done my part, I've been here 95 years and I've done it. It's time for me to sit down, that'll never work. Because as far as I know, Genesis and Revelation, He never gave us that time. There's always something for us. Now we might have to change what we're doing. 
Just like Joshua. There was a time when he was in the heat of the battle. But then God moved him to the staff, holding the staff when Moses went on. Are you with me today? Everybody's got a place. And the lady that give her heart, give her money, put it in the offering plate, she give the might. She wasn't in the battle. She just gave the might. And the might was all she had. What about when they broke the alabaster's box and anointed Jesus Christ with it? She wasn't the one going out and healing people. But she was the one that when Christ sat down, she is tending to him and his needs. And that's what we need to be doing today is tending to God's needs. Say, how in the world did you do that? Ask him. Ask him. Ask him today. Lord, what do you have me to do today? Lord, I don't know what's ahead of me today. That's why it's good to pray when you first get up. So you can be prepared. Because you have no idea. It's good to pray morning and night. I didn't say when to do the most of it. That's between you and the Lord. Just make sure you acknowledge Him when you wake up. Pharisees hard on us. Hard on others. Easy on themselves. Spiritual man. Easy on others. Hard on himself. And this is just simple. What's in your heart today? Number four. Number four. Now listen. Number four. The devil wants you to pay attention to your feelings. The devil wants you to pay attention to your feelings. Christ wants you to pay attention to the truth. The Bible says he'd have us to worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's what I'm talking about, what's on the inside. What's in your heart today? What's in there? And that's the Spirit. The Spirit of God. The touch of God. The presence of God. What's in there today? The devil would have you think about your feelings. God wants you to pay attention to your truth. And that's the truth. That's the Word of God. You can find it more ways than one in God's Word today. He wants you to pay attention to the truth. It's not about how you feel. You think that's true? Absolutely it's true. Are you saved based on how you feel or what God's Word says? The truth. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You're saved based on the truth. I don't know how you feel. Because there's some days the devil's good at dragging you down. And you don't feel so hot about being a good soldier. But that's the truth today. The devil wants you to pay attention to your feelings. Christ wants you to pay attention to the truth. Number five. Number five, don't say God's not speaking. Don't say God is silent when he ain't opened his word. This is just a straight and narrow today. You can't say God's not speaking or don't say God's not speaking if you ain't opened his word. We have the written word and we have the Holy Spirit that speaks to us. You cannot say you can't, but you can't be right with him and say it. That God's, God is not speaking if you ain't opened his word today. Because he will. He plainly said, if I'm not right, some of you have been here longer than I have. He's a rewarder of what? Them that diligently seek him. That's what he said. And I'll move on quickly. Number six, and I'm done. What is in your heart? You can be sure that a Holy Spirit, that a Holy Spirit, more than that, you can be sure that the Holy Spirit will not enter into a man and then let him live like the world. You can be sure that the Holy Spirit will not enter in. Take a boat and let a man live like the world. So what does that mean, preacher? I'll tell you exactly. What that means is, is that when you ask, you shall receive. When you seek, you shall find. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So when you ask, he comes in, takes a boat. But when you move back and live like the world, there's an uh, It's like hitting a wall. There's contention there. There is, a, there is a strife there. There is an uneasiness there. Because he said, uh, uh, he, he goes into all the world. That's what he said. And then he says, he, uh, it's his will, it's not his will, he should perish. And that means going to hell. That means not being right with him. That means perishing in this world. That means losing blessings in this world. He wants us to be right with him. That's what he wants. And that's why I'm asking you. What's in your heart? 
And see, the, the deal is, this ain't, this ain't hard. It's easy. And we all know how to do it, even me. I, I, I shouldn't say it, but I put a load of clothes in the washer this morning when I first got up. I was saying my prayers and I hit me. I ain't washed a bit of my clothes for next week to work. I went right in there, throwed them in there. By the time we left, I put them in the dryer. We all know how to do it. So what does clothes got anything to do with this? Well, you've got to be clean. And everywhere, and I don't know about you, but each of us, I think, won't wear a clean set. I, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to put them dirty chicken clothes on that I had on yesterday again to, tomorrow. I want a new set of dirty clothes. That's what I want. I mean, serious. It's hot in there. <laughs> You'd sweat a little bit. I'd want a clean, dirty shirt. You say, how's that make sense? Well, we wore it last week. We'll wear it again next week. But I want it at least washed. Now I've got intentions. I've got to go back out in there. But I still want to be clean. We know how to do it. We want to clean house. Let's clean the house. We want to clean vehicle. Clean the vehicle. We want to clean church. Clean the church. We want to clean life. Let's clean the life up. How we do it? It's a daily thing. And some people wait till once a week. Or some do a little bit every day. Every how you want to do it. As far as your cleaning business goes. But God said, if you regard iniquity in your heart, Lord God will not hear you. And I guarantee you this, you'll have a better day if you'll meet him every morning. I didn't say spend four hours, but I said just meet him. Meet him. With sincerity. Meet him. And on your way to work or at lunchtime or throughout the day, Spend your time, your heart, your mind with Him. And I'm asking you, what's in your heart? Because that matters. Because our very purpose is going to all the world, preach the gospel, tell them all. He said, love the Lord God with all your heart. But well, what's in your heart to love with? That's what matters, what's in there. What's it made of? And if you got too much in there, let's lay something down so we can pick something up. I don't know about you. Being serious. When I was going to deal with it, I'm going to say this and I'm going to be done. This is serious. This even works for me. We're just going back and forth to the doctor every, every other week or every two or three weeks, this stinking hand. Every time, I don't know what made a difference. Every time you go in, I'm going to check your temperature, your blood pressure, and how much you weigh. Right, well, what's that got to do? <laughs> I'll give him a hard time. So, what's that got to do with my hand? <laughs> This is what we do every time. Just stand on them and say, all right, I'll do it. So I decided this is what I was going to do for me. Got, got nothing to do with nobody else. This is what I decided I'd do for me. I love Coca-Cola. I love it, buddy. Especially when it's ice cold. I love it. And there ain't a thing wrong with it. Now, it'll do a lot of things. And it's probably not the most healthy, but as far as I'm concerned, it ain't no sin. Okay? But I love some Coca-Cola. And I can drink my weight in it, I think. So I made up my mind. This is truth. I'm going to quit drinking this mess for, I think, for three weeks to my next or last appointment. I'm gonna, I ain't going to drink it. I'm going to have to switch something else. So I chose sweet tea. <laughs> <laughs> so I chose sweet tea. But I'm just saying. I chose sweet tea. I lost six pounds three weeks. And that's good for me now. <laughs> I mean, I still eat like I wanted to. Went like I wanted to. I mean... <laughs> Now, I try to eat something sweet every time I sit down, but it's just me. And I'm just being honest. But that's what I'm telling you. Let's just get ready. Let's just start with one thing. Let's just lay one thing down. It'll make the difference. Lost six pounds. The woman said, what are you doing? I said, I just quit drinking some Coca-Cola. Well, are you going to keep it? I said, no, probably not. I can't handle it. But that's the way we are, is it not? Serious. Let's just be honest. And I told him Wednesday night, I'm going to tell you today, we're going to talk about me because I ain't going to talk about you. I can't, I, maybe I can stay out of trouble this way. You understand? So we're going to talk about me. But that's just the way we are. Sometimes we know, find out something works. I, that lady said, she had a good point, didn't she? You going to keep doing that? I don't know. <laughs> you know why I fall short? Because my mind ain't made up. I couldn't quit it forever. I'd be lying if I told you I was going to. I can't. I can, but that want to, that's what we're talking about today. People do what they want to do. You with me? Even for me. 
So I'm just asking you today, just be honest. What's in your heart? What's in your heart? You can do whatever you set your mind to do, but more than that, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. That's why I'll stand on our feet. I'm done today. I know Miss Aldridge is not with us, so get your red back hymnals. Can we sing? Let's sing one verse. Uh, Amazing Grace. Let's sing the first verse of Amazing Grace. You come prepared. Everybody get to red backs hymnal, page number 57 this morning. We're going to sing the first stanza together. If nobody comes, we'll be dismissed, okay?